What's going on, family? I'm actually on my way back from Albany right now. Wow, uh, Rochester, New York. So I have a couple minutes to talk to you. I read one of the comments that were in this section, um, one of my AMC Hall videos, and it said, can we please talk about this beef that's going on between GTII and COSF? Well, it's super easy, right? We have what's called a decelerating account, so a devaluating account, and an accelerating account, one that's growing. All right, it's up for you to pick out what you want to do with your money. So if that means you have to splash into one play, and it grows, you have higher expectations for the number, but you see another play moving faster at that point in time, it only makes sense to move your money into the accelerating play taxes and all the other bullshit that people move into that you're saving by holding onto a stock and not making any more money in the interim, that's all bullshit. Get yourself a good fucking account and, and cover that end of it because there's money that you're leaving on the table by not letting it grow, all right? If one is moving up 2% and another one's moving up uh, down 4%, that means that's 8% that you could have picked up. That's a, just by selling a position and rebuying it. There's nobody stopping you from doing it. Also, the community that we have and the community that Luke calls the family, which I'm part of, I am 100% part of it, has zero ability to create a naked squeeze. They do have the ability to drive up a stock a little bit, pump and dump, whatever you want to call it. However, when we hop in a trade, we know ahead of time that our money is not locked to that play. We know when we get into that play that it could run up 20%, could run up 80%. It's on our own discretion. All right? Now, I want to bring up the fact that your bank account, your savings account, is going to grow your money at the rate of 3%. That's not why we're in the stock market. We don't want 3% gains. We want big gains. All right? We want gains that will grow our money. You know, make it worth the risk. We're not playing with it right now, so we want it to grow. I'm not going to sit and be what you guys call a bag holder for any company. I have no loyalty to GTII. I have no fucking loyalty to AMC, Dave, GME, fucking COSM, any of these stocks. All I have is an intuition on whether or not something's going to continue to grow or shrink. So if some people in the GTII family call me a shill, no, I'm not a fucking shill. I'm here to fucking make money, and I'm going to slide my money where it's making the most money. So at about $2.48 when I was still up about 110%, all right, I got to COSM. It was 15.8 cents when I made the fucking transaction. So you do that. Even if it's sitting at 400%, I'm making, uh, I mean, 45 cents. I'm still making 200% of my money. And that is compared to the negative 50 I would have made if I was still sitting in GTII. It, it's a no fucking brainer. And for anybody that sits here and tells me that I have to sit in the stock and be one of the players that's holding on to a position so you can, you know, uh, gain extra information, that's your own fucking deal. You should be creating your own sense of it. All right? The sentiment that we create with YouTube videos is short-lived, all right? Because if I'm posting on it, there might be something tomorrow or next week or a piece of news that comes up in an hour that makes me want to sell it. So when Lou started talking about how GTII wasn't doing the audit, there was something quirky going on, at that point in time, I developed a new sentiment on GTII. My, what my sentiment was is, oh, there's about two, 300,000 people that might just drop the fuck out of this play all at once and leave me holding what you guys call the bag. Fuck that. I developed my own fucking sentiment when I heard that he was going to do that, all right? And the reason why we watch these YouTubes is so we can get a better understanding of how that play is going to move, whether it be up, whether it be down, whether it be fucking sideways, all right? We watch these YouTubes to be able to gain an edge, well, he gave us an edge. He told us, hey, listen, these guys are not doing what they said they were going to do or they're just not being completely transparent. At that point in time, you have to make a decision. That doesn't mean like, oh, I'm just going to hold on to another week. Yeah, so at that fucking point, you are making bad decisions with your money. 
you're not letting it grow. You're like, oh, well, I'm just going to set it to a set standpoint in time. Like, uh, I'm going to hold it until Friday. No, you don't hold anything to a certain point. You hold it until you can develop some sort of sentiment of where the numbers are going. It's that fucking simple. All right, fam. Um, I'm starting to bounce up and down because I got to go stop and pee and I can see a rest of the area coming up. So I just wanted to say, hey, listen, there is no beef between two stocks. One of them actually has momentum. That's the one that my money is going to stay in. I'll catch you all later and uh, just make it tough.